What's up guys, on today's video we are going to be talking about slight hands. Before we get into that, I'm going to make some food and we're going to grab a coffee. Coffee. I got the Butterfly Playing Cards by Andre Pesnica, and we're going to talk about some sleight of hand. Now, I'm going to break this video down into loads of different parts. So, we're going to talk about what is sleight of hand, we're going to talk about different types of sleight of hand, and then we're going to go on to talk about different applications for sleight of hand. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a like, you subscribe, you drop a comment down below, and let's get into it. It's so easy to get bogged down into different definitions of like what is sleight of hand. If you were to take it as a non magical term, sleight of hand is the ability of using your hands really quick in order to conceal something or do something really fast or really quickly. So, a lot of thieves might use sleight of hand, change up cash, steal stuff. That's basically sort of like an outside of magic approach to it. However, in magic, what is sleight of hand? Well, you could get bogged down into loads of different definitions of it, but essentially what it boils down to. It's a way of, it's like utilizing a move to get from one part of the trick to another. Or you use it uh, in your routine to get from one part of the routine to another part of the routine. And it sort of moves you in a certain way or in a certain, it transitions you to the end of the trick. So on to the second part in this slight hand video. What are the different types of slight hand? Well, it's, I could just list them off and have words pop up down the side here. And that'd be pretty cool and that'd be pretty easy. However, that doesn't really do anything for you. This whole channel is about knowledge. It's all about growing and developing yourselves as magicians. So I'm going to show you, well, I filmed a little bit video using the butterfly playing cards, different types of slight hand. And you can kind of like see them, what they look like visually. Now that's the whole different part. And we're going to go into learning about magic later on in the series. When you get magic books, which are great, great source to learn from, the diagrams for hands are really hard especially to show different types of sight hand. So I think in a video form it's a lot easier, especially in today's day and age, I think a lot of people are more visual learners. So it's much easier for people to sort of look at these and go, this is what that is. It doesn't necessarily state that what I'm showing you is the exact way to do it. It also doesn't state that that is the only way to do it, as there are, for example, loads of different types of passes. So we've got the Herman, we've got a classic, we've got a brick, we've got a cover. They're all different styles of a pass, but a pass that generally looks something like this. Watch some of the videos here, enjoy that, understand a little bit that's going on, and I'll see you on the other side. So I hope you enjoyed that visual compilation of magic guys. Really fun to film, I actually really enjoy that. I haven't done some visual magic in a while for the camera. And that kind of leads into this a little bit more because that visual magic is pure sleight of hand, but it's filmed at certain angles and they're very angle sensitive things. If you were stood behind me, you would probably see me flash the cards um, or you'll see me expose how the trick is done. And that's key because sleight of hand when you're performing in the real world versus sleight of hand for online are two different things. Sleight of hand in the real world needs to be practical. It needs to be a move that you're using that doesn't seem like a move that allows you to get to the next point. So for example, a double lift, or you might do a diagonal palm shift and have the card in your back pocket like I showed on the camera. And there will be a story to go with that, which is called patter. 
and patter is basically a way in which you can disguise the sleight of hand or you give justification for doing a certain sleight of hand technique. And what's key to remember guys is that when you're doing stuff online, it is all about angles. So if you're filming stuff for online, make sure that you watch that back like a hundred times and just see if you can see something. Have a friend watch it back and see if they can see something before you post it. Because the essence of sleight of hand is that it's meant to be kept secret yet we teach it all on YouTube. It's kind of like an oxymoron, but the whole point, like I said, is slight hands meant to be hidden. You're meant to be able to deceive the person without actually showing what you've done. And that's where the true beauty lies in slight hand, is your ability to conceal the trick and make it seem like it's something completely different to the spectator without having to say a word. So like I said, when we're performing in the real world, our slight hand needs to be different. It needs to be well-practiced, well oiled and one of the main things that we need to do with our slight hand is not look at it which seems so ridiculous because when you're learning all you're doing is looking at you do the trick and that's where I think filming in front of a camera comes in handy is to look away from what you're doing and sort of look at the camera and just see what's going on or get a mirror and practice by looking in the mirror and not looking at your hands and that's where your slight magic will improve so that's a little tip for you guys when you're learning slight hand don't look at the cards when you're doing a slight hand because your eyes tell a different story to what your hands are doing. And if your eyes are looking down, guess where the spectator is gonna look? Which brings me on to my next point, which I think is very key for when we're performing with sleight of hand and we're using it in practice. Now, let's say, for example, you need to do a control to get the card to the second uh, position or the top position of the deck. Now, you could do a double undercut, which is a very simple control. And it's very, very simple. It looks like this. Now, that double undercut can be justified by dropping packets on the table and making it look like you're, you're shuffling the cards up. And it's probably a lot easier to perform. Now, you could do a pass and you could get it into that position by doing a pass. But what that does when you're out in the open and when you're performing is it opens you up to different angles and sensitivities. And what that does is it leaves you vulnerable as a performer. Now, if you haven't managed a crowd before, it can be quite daunting to do this trick. You do the routine, you do a Herman pass, and you're caught out and someone sees it. If you're not used to respond to that sort of criticism or that spectator or that heckler, you can almost knock your entire confidence and not want to perform. The whole point of slight hand is that we're comfortable using it, but it has a real world application. There's no point doing something that's ridiculous, a really hard move that you can use an easier move to get to the same outcome. Put loads of different things in as your input. The thing that you're doing in the middle will always stay the same but the output is going to be different depending on what you put into it. So for example, if you do something that you've nailed a hundred times, it looks really good, it's not angle sense, and you can justify it using your patter and it goes in, the outcome is going to be a greater in terms of a reaction. Whereas if you do something that's a little bit harder, a little bit more riskier because you fancy doing it um, and it's what the trick calls for when you're learning it on a tutorial and you don't know that there's a different way that you could do something and you haven't mastered it and it's something that's quite difficult, the input is going to be noticed by someone and your output is going to be much lower in terms of your reaction and you may have to handle a crowd at the end of it. Right, to summarise guys, slight hand is a, it's just simply a move that you can use to get from one point to the next point in a routine. Now there may be multiple different slight hands that you do at different times and that's about having a memory to remember when to do it how to do it and why you're doing it. What can slight hand be used for? Well, slight hand can be used to create a great reaction and to pull off an amazing and a, a really incredible magic trick that's believable. As Daniel Madison once said, magic is dead, but it's our job as a magician to make the spectators believe it is real. Well, that's like paraphrasing or something, but it's along those lines. And it's essentially that. You're using the slight hand or the deceptive arts to get to that point where you're getting a reaction from a spectator. That's all magic is. And with slight hand, what are we gonna use it for? We're gonna use it, or we're gonna learn slight hand that has real world applications. By understanding different types of slight hand, it allows us that when we do perform magic tricks or we learn magic tricks that involve a really difficult slide, if we have loads and loads and loads in our arsenal, we can have a workaround that maybe might not be angle sensitive. So you can adapt the same trick to different arenas or different platforms that you're performing. So if it's on the street, visual magic, if it's parlor magic, if it's at a wedding, you have to like change little parts of the magic trick to tailor it to the event that you're doing or the, the crowd you're doing. So for example, you probably wouldn't do a Halloween themed seancey sort of trick in July, in the sun, where it's not spooky. But you have to tailor that trick to a dark environment where 
you know, it's a little bit spooky and it's candle lit and stuff like that. That gives you like, that's, that's the point. You have to use your mind as a magician to tailor everything that's going along. So slight hand, for example, a pass is this, but you may use it for something else. And that is the beauty of magic. Guys, I've absolutely, focus. I've absolutely loved making these videos for you guys. I've really enjoyed it. The reaction I've had from people in the comment section have really, like, it's just amazing to see that reaction. So guys, I'm really glad that you're enjoying them. If you want me to keep making these series and you want to see some certain things on there, drop a comment down below, like actually comment. I'll respond to all of the comments within the first hour of it dropping, but if you drop a comment at any time, I get a notification, I will definitely respond to it. Give it a like if you have enjoyed this video. If you haven't checked out the other two videos, these ones, go check them out. Um, I'll leave them in the end of the video. And as always, guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed yourself. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> oh. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. A little bit glary glare. Coffee shaking so much. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So, back and Guys, I have. Ah! <laughs> la, la, la. I can't get my words out.